I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. On today's video, I want to show you how you can bypass multiple blocks on the Axe FX3 FM9 or FM3, independent of your scene status. This is a question that I get asked quite a lot, and it's something that I see asked quite a lot on various forums and discussion groups. So I figured I would put up my approach to doing this here, as well as why you might want to do that. Before we get started, let's take a look at the preset I'm using today. I have a really basic preset with four different amp channels in here, and I have them each mapped to their own independent scene on the Axe FX3. So scene one, you can see, is using a combination of a compressor, the band commander at stock settings, a cabinet, I'm just using my usual LT TV Mix 7 cabinet, and some reverb, and it sounds like this. <laughs> Let's move over to scene two. On scene two, you can see that the compressor is turned off, we have the reverb on, we've added a chorus, and we've changed to channel B in the amp block, which is the AC20 EF86 treble. I've just turned the drive down slightly on this particular amp. It's a great chimey sounding amp. <laughs> Let's move over to scene three, and on this particular scene, I'm not very good at using a mouse left-handed, as you can see, we're using the 50 watt plexi, and then I'm using a plex delay effect type that was added recently called Detuned Space 2. This is just gonna kind of thicken everything up and give it a nice pad style sound together with the reverb, no chorus or any other effects though. <laughs> Beautiful long decay there, and then let's move over to scene four, where I'm just using the USA lead mid gain together with the same cab, no effects at all. <laughs> So four very different sounding amp models in there, each mapped to their own channel. And the motivation for this would be that, let's say you need those four basic sounds for your kind of bread and butter rhythm sounds during a gig. Let's say you were playing covers, so you're having to cover a whole variety of different sounds, but you kind of have your really clean, clean, maybe for some kind of 70s style funk stuff or 80s pop. You use the chime sound for your old school rock and roll. You use the crunch sound for your like harder edge rock. And then you use this chunk sound for anything a little bit more modern and distorted. And like I said, they're just your kind of bread and butter rhythm sounds. But then you also wanna play guitar solos on top of that. So you want to have a bit more gain and you wanna have a delay on there. You can see that I have got a drive and a delay just waiting to be deployed in any particular scene. So let's go back to scene one, for example, and let's say I wanna turn the delay and the drive on. Let's just have a listen to what that sounds like. And this would be my go-to, I guess, for kind of like a slightly more driven bluesy thing. <laughs> say I want to be able to turn both of those on at the same time, I've got enough space in this preset to save a brand new scene with these settings where I can just take this and have the drive and the delay engaged. I could save it to scene five. Then when I want to go to my slightly bluesier version of my clean sound, I can just navigate to scene five and I could name it something like bluesy. I could do a similar thing with any of the other scenes we've seen on there. I've got eight scenes to play with. Personally, that's probably how I would do it. But let's say I want the ability to be on any scene 
and not have to go, hey, I'm on scene three. What's my kind of more driven, delayed version of this scene? Is it scene, it's gotta be scene seven or it's gotta be scene eight. I don't really wanna to have to remember where I've mapped it. I just wanna press a button and I wanna get that drive and that delay on the exact scene that I'm currently on. This is how I would go about doing it. We can assign a control switch to the bypass state of any block on a fractal product. So let's do this. Let's right click the bypass here and let's set the source to be control switch number one. Now, personally, I like it when the control switch is on, the effect is on. So I'm gonna set the minimum to be bypassed and the maximum to be engaged. And let's do exactly the same thing on our delay block. So then these will be in sync. We'll go control switch number one, and I'm gonna change the order of these two controls right here. And you can see at the moment, both blocks are bypassed. I have a fractal FC controller down here where I can access control switch number one. So watch what happens when I press that control switch. <laughs> engage and disengage at exactly the same time, but I'm not changing scenes in there. So that's really handy because I can just have the lead version of this particular preset, or I can go over to scene three, you know, if I was playing some kind of crunchy rock stuff and then I just wanted a boost and I want to delay on top of everything. <laughs> That is really, really awesome. And you know, if I navigate over to scene four, this was really dry. This would be the sort of example I would use here where I want not only more gain, but more delay to take that dry edge off everything. <laughs> I could obviously set this up to engage entire chains of effects. Let's say that not only do I want more gain and delay, I actually want an overall level boost on there. The way I would do that would be to make some room in here for something like a filter block. Let's just add a null filter to all of this. So we can go filter one, and I'm just gonna set it for a three dB totally flat boost on here. And again, I will right click the bypass state on here. I'm gonna assign it to the same control switch. I will set the control switch status uh, the way I like it, the way I did before. And now when I press that control switch, I've got more drive, I've got more delay, and I've got an overall level boost. Check it out. <laughs> Super cool right there. Now, another thing you could do with those control switches is let's say when I do this, you know, I want my drive and my filter and my delay to be on, but let's say I want to engage a compressor block when they're all off, just, just as an example. So what I could do is come in here and say with the comp, let's assign the bypass state to control switch number one, but we'll leave the minimum and maximum values to be opposite of what they were for the other block. So watch this, when I engage the compressor, uh, well, I should say when I engage the control switch, the compressor is gonna turn off and the other blocks are gonna come on. <laughs> can be expanded to any number of blocks or functions that you like in there. Another good example would be instead of using a drive block, you know, you could play around with the input boost and fat switch in a particular app. And this is actually what I use control switches for live. Furthermore, if you go to the controllers and you look at the control switch per scene menu, you can set up the default state of your control switch per scene, meaning that Say on scene one, if I turn the control switch on, then I navigate to another scene 
and I come back to scene one, do I want my control switch automatically on or off? Or do I want it to remember the last state in there? So you have those three options in there. If you have any other questions about this control switch technique for engaging multiple blocks, let me know in the comments. If you have any requests for future Tuesday Tone Tip videos, also let me know in the comments. I hope you all have a fantastic week and I will see you next Tuesday. Take it easy.